This is a world where birds eat horses. Welcome back to Our Ancient Past. Previously, we journeyed to late Triassic Argentina, where we witnessed the rise of the early dinosaurs. Followed by the freezing tropics of early Jurassic Antarctica. As well as the fern prairies and conifer forests of the American Midwest during the late Jurassic. Most recently, we followed the story of a young orphan Triceratops as she tried to navigate and survive Owl Creek. We saw the dinosaurs flourishing and thriving off of the land until their ultimate demise. Now we watch as a female Smilodon stands up to her suppressors, when many weird and wonderful creatures coexisted with one another in early Pleistocene Florida. A mastodon calf is exploring the forests. The calf stops dead in his tracks as he has stumbled into the territory of a very strange creature. This is Paramylodon, a giant ground sloth, much larger than its slow-moving descendants. The curious Paramylodon has gotten much too close to the Mastodon calf. Father has come to rescue his child. Paramylodon has been intimidated, and thus he retreats. Now the calf shall be reunited with his mother. <coughs> Father and son have returned. The great American Mastodon, whose name means breast tooth, weighed up to about 6 tons and stood from the shoulders at 10 feet. Mastodon was a herbivore, it used its long trunk to pull leaves down to its mouth. Due to their immense size, adult Mastodons didn't have to worry about much, however for the calves, they had to worry about threats from Smilodon or wolves. Which is why Mastodons travel in herds or small family groups, as there is always safety in numbers. 
Just like its close relative, the woolly mammoth, Mastodons were also covered in a thick coat of hair. Even though they lived in a rather tropical environment, so such a coat is unnecessary, which is the main reason why modern elephants lost the hair in order to adapt to their environments, whether it's the savanna or the jungle. On these cliffs, a small pack of Smilodon are resting. This pack is only made up of three members, two bachelor males and a young female. But even if the pack is small, there is a pecking order, and unfortunately for the female, she is at the bottom of it. Ever since she was taken in by the bachelors, they've constantly been trying to have their way with her. But she will not be having any of it. But even though life in this pack is awful, life would be even harder if she was on her own. So, she has no choice but to deal with the cruelty of the bachelors. For now, she decides to escape for a little while. Smilodon, whose name means two-edged knife, grew to 2.3 meters in length and about 1.5 meters in height, as well as 160 kilograms in weight. Its diet consists of wild boars such as Platygonus, giant ground sloths like Paramylodon, or even the Great Mastodon. However, it was known to get into conflict with terror birds and wolves. This infamous battle for supremacy of the Americas was surprisingly won by the smallest of the trio, the direwolf. Its smaller descendants live amongst us today. Smilodon has often been referred to as the saber-toothed tiger, even though tigers aren't as closely related to Smilodon as other big cats, such as lions and jaguars. So perhaps the nickname Sabretooth Cat will be more appropriate for Smilodon's iconic yet fragile teeth. Down at what is now the Santa Fe River, the Mastodon family is bathing together. The Santa Fe River is by far one of the largest rivers in all of Florida, but during the Pleistocene, it was even larger, spanning all the way from Colorado. It seems that today, the peace is about to be interrupted. The visitor is the female Smilodon. Coming to the river to quench her first is the only way she can escape the bachelors. The alphas roar echoes from afar, beckoning the female Smilodon to return to the pack. The Mastodon family can now return to relaxing in the river, while the Smilodon returns to hell. The bachelors seem to have found something.
this rotting dead corpse riddled with flies and maggots will be an excellent feast for the Smaldron pack. The Alpha will have the first bite. Once the flies are gone, the subordinate can now dig in. The female, however, is on the bottom of the pecking order. She will be lucky to even get a bone. While she waits for her turn to feed, she decides to rest in this bed of grass. The owner of this kill has returned. This is Titanus, a giant carnivorous terror bird. Let this fight between sabers and feathers begin. Already the subordinate is sent flying. Titanus has defeated the trio of bees. Now the Titanus shall reclaim her kill. Titanus the Terror Bird is a species of carnivorous forest rocket, one of the last of them in fact. Titanus weighed up to 150 kilograms and stood at 1.9 meters tall. Titanus was undoubtedly a very fast runner. With its long and powerful legs, it could reach speed similar to that of a modern-day ostrich. This terror bird also had a very impressive beak, which it used to crush bone and paralyze its victims by stabbing them. Its diet mostly consisted of giant ground sloths, horses, and wild boars. But eventually, it did go extinct, mainly due to competition from rivals. And while the mammals have become very successful, especially with the beginning of humankind. It is the birds who have diversified by far the most and have spread across the entire earth. They come in many shapes and sizes. But before you underestimate the avians, remember where they came from. Out on the prairies today, a boar known as Platygonus digs up the grass to eat upon the roots. For protection, the Platygonus is accompanied by a Paramylodon and a Doidocurus. This armoured tribute to the now extinct Ankylosaurus is heavily armoured as well, and surely a formidable foe against any predators. It would be most wise to not get on its bad side. Oh. 
in the nearby bushes, the Smilodon pack prepare to make them move. Their chosen victim is the Platy Gonus. The female Smilodon can wait no longer. She must attack. The Alpha orders her to stay put. <laughs> Disobeying the Alpha, she goes in for the kill. She has been blocked by the giant body of the Doi de Kuros. Smilodon attacked too early, and it has resulted in a leg being fractured. The Alpha and his subordinate decide to leave her for dead. The continental collision between both North and South America had created the Isthmus of Panama, a land bridge, a connection between the Americas. And what followed was the Great American Interchange. In this event, there was what you would call a trade. For example, animals from the North would cross over the land bridge to the South, and vice versa. Animals from the North would include boars, wolves, cats, and elephants while animals from the south included glyptodonts, sloths, and terabirds. And while this was great for some, for others, this was the cause of their demise. Hours later, the Smilodon is still in a critical condition. Appearing to be dead, a dire wolf is hopeful that he will get a meal. Standing at about 38 inches from the shoulders, the dire wolf is much taller than any modern day wolf. Ignoring her pain, the Smilodon gathers up the last bit of strength that remains to get back up and fight off the dire wolf. The lone direwolf didn't even stand a chance against the Smilodon. It is most likely that he will not survive tonight. From now on, she is a solo act. As day returns, a tortoise slowly trudges along the dunes. This species is known as Hespero Testudo, an omnivore. Almost the size as a modern day Galapagos tortoise.
Nearby, the Titanus is on the run. Immediately, she stops in her trails at the sight of the tortoise. She has never seen a tortoise before, and its strange appearance and hard shell are enough to catch the curiosity of the terror bird. Although the Titanus has an extraordinarily sharp beak, her efforts prove useless against the tortoise's shell. Eventually, the Titanus grows bored of the tortoise's impenetrable shell. At last, the tortoise is free to continue on with his day. Now they shall part their separate ways. Here atop this hill, the Mastodon family have arrived to this location in search of food. Nearby, the female Smilodon who last time we saw managed to survive a confrontation with a direwolf, now prepares to make her first kill alone. However, she is not the only one who has decided to go after the Mastodons. Quickly, she goes in for the kill. While the Mastodons are kept busy with the bachelors, the female takes the opportunity to leave the calf. is down, the Alpha is quick to flee. One slip and the calf is severely wounded. This kill is quite a victory for her, but she won't be able to have her celebratory feast just yet. The Alpha Smilodon, her rival. He will no longer suppress her under his tyrannical leadership any longer. have echoed across the valley, and the male surrenders. Now 
that will unfortunately have to be the conclusion to this series. My name is Oscar Grant, the creator of Arrington Past. I hope you enjoyed our brief yet entertaining journey through the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. While this may be the end, don't you worry. There'll be more to come throughout the year.